Hello and welcome to Charter Local Edition. Today we're in Carson City, Nevada, talking to your elected state lawmakers. And my guest today is Amber Joyner. She's an assemblywoman. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And you have your beautiful daughter here learning a little bit more about how state lawmakers work and what bills are and what they what they do. How's it going for you so far? Okay. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. It's very important you being an educator, you've taught in the um, higher level education levels, mm -hmm. for us to always be teaching our children and exposing them to careers and opportunities. Sometimes when you're sitting in school, it's kind of hard to get out there and see what a job would actually be like. Exactly, and I think with the legislature, when I teach, I always tell my students, one of my missions in life is to demystify this place and really have <laughs> people know that it's their house and to have them you know, feel comfortable coming in and advocating for the things they feel strongly about. And so the younger the better as far as getting them in here and making them feel comfortable with the process. And one of the bills you're working on this session with your background in higher education is really looking at what higher education is costing and the impact to our state. Absolutely. I'm, I'm hearing a lot from students that they're, they're carrying a lot of debt coming out of college. We know that because of the recession, the state funding for higher education um, necessarily had to decrease. And so a lot of that was put on the backs of students. And so what we're seeing now is um, one of my bills is for an interim study to really look at the affordability of higher education and make sure we're not leaving any students out based on the ability to pay. Yes. In the long run, how is the state benefited when people can't afford to go to college or when they come out of college, their debt load is too high to buy anything because part of the benefit of having a person with higher education living in your state is that they can contribute to the economy through purchasing. Absolutely, and it doesn't help anybody for them to have a lot of debt where they, they don't, can't live that American dream of being able to buy a house or start a family. And we're hearing it is really hindering students from being able to do both of those things. You're also very interested in advancing some park funding for yes. your beautiful state. Yes, absolutely. Outdoors are really important to us. Um, I lead a her Girl Scout troop. And a couple years ago, we were uh, trying to visit one of our local parks, and they had had a 40% cut in their budget, and they didn't have anybody to show us around and give us a tour of the incredible gardens that they had. And um, that really put me on a mission, and I, I joined up with a, a group of uh, stakeholders in the community to try to find more funding for our parks. So one of the bills that I have does um, create uh, parks, trails, and open spaces districts, they call them. And other states have them, and basically it's a, a type of local government. It's an overlay where student, uh, or citizens in an area can get together and decide to, to fund the parks around them. It's also helpful for things like the One Truckee River Project, for example, that we have in Reno. Mm -hmm. um, any, any group of folks that want to get together and find additional ways to, to fund, it's a, it's a tool that would authorize that. And you have another bill that uh, would put some of the safeguards that we have with Obamacare at the state level, depending on what happens on the federal level with the unknowns of the changes that might be coming up with the Trump administration. Exactly. You know, I think uh, we've come a long way in health care. Uh, we have a lot of improvements that have been made, and we've come to expect certain things from our health insurance, things like, you know, that they won't discriminate against us, that they won't charge us more because we're a woman, which used to happen, um, or that they won't drop us just because we're too sick for them to cover. And um, also kids staying on until they're 26. That's another thing that we have come to expect. So all of those key provisions that we have currently in the federal health care insurance um, world, I want to enshrine in state law through one of my bills to make sure that we don't lose those protections if the federal law changes. Well, you're through the lion's share of the session now, and you still have a little more time left to work, and many bills have died, and there are a few alive. So where are you going to put your maximum effort in the time that you have left? Right. Well, it's, it's challenging. You know, we all, um, I serve on three committees, and so we're, while I have these bills that I'm advocating for and that I think would be really good for, for hardworking Nevadans, we also um, hear each other's bills. So we have a lot of bills coming through that uh, in the committee process, we ask questions and make sure that we're um, vetting all of those policies very carefully, too. So I'm just doing the best I can, keeping up with the, that side of the work, and then also advocating as well as I can for these important policies. All right. And one last question, and this is for you. Did you have a good time today? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you both, and we appreciate you watching. I'm Dana Cowley, and this is Charter Local Edition. 